Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you for having me on TED Talks. Many renowned speakers, persons have spoken on various podiums earlier and shared their dreams for our country. I'm just a budding entrepreneur and a fellow citizen like all of you present here. I'm here to share with you all that I have a need, not just a dream, for my country, for my better tomorrow. And the need is that I want our country to be on top of the world very soon. And this need is not for tomorrow of my children or grandchildren, but for my tomorrow. I'm very confident as a young working nation, we will achieve this very soon. Abapuji once said that heart of India lies in our villages. If the heart is strong and healthy, the whole body will naturally be so. And guess what? This thought is relevant even after decades. Our greatest philanthropist and scientist, Dr. Abdul Kalamji, shared similar views. He said that developed India would be a network of prosperous villages empowered with various connectivities, both physical and virtual. They both dreamt of making our villages stronger, and their dreams emerged out of their life's experiences in trying to make our country stronger. We all know we are the second largest populated country in the world with 1.3 billion population. 65% of our population is under 35, 50% of our population is under 25. The average age of an Indian today is between 26 to 28, while the average age of most of the economically forward countries is about 40 years. The International Lab Labor Organization has worked out numbers saying that we will have 160 million people between the age group of 20 to 24 by 2020, while China, the largest populated country, will have only 94 million at the same point in time. We are a young, productive, and dynamic population. But do we have the ability to take advantage of the situation? We have world's largest skilled resources available in India. As a country, there's a strong need to equip these young population in order to enable them to take advantage of the situation in working together and transforming our economy into the world's best. And I would like to bring to your attention 70% of this workforce reside in rural India. 70% is a huge number. Rural India is a land of abundant home-run entrepreneurs. You can find many skilled and young entrepreneurs working in various fields like handicrafts, agriculture, etc. They form the backbone of our economy. Cottage industry is a way of life for most of the rural people, most of our villages. Unlike people in urban India, where we work through the organized businesses to earn our living, people in rural India earn their living through self-employment. Cottage industry has given huge economic independence for most of our villages, including women. There are various kinds of cottage industries, sorry, rural, uh, there are very kind of entrepreneurs one can find in our villages. For example, individual entrepreneurs, where individuals do businesses like agarbatti making, tailoring, etc. Group entrepreneurs, where a group of people come together and work in a small workplace like toy making, agriculture, spices, cluster entrepreneurship, where a skill is, uh, a skill is developed depending on a specific geography or area. The best examples that for these are Shivakashi, Toys from Chennapatna, Silk from Kanjipuram, and the largest of all this are cooperative societies, where a group of people come together, make an organization for doing specific job. The best examples for these would be the bank cooperatives, the milk cooperatives, etc. What do these kind of entrepreneurships do to our economy? They add value to our vital resources, they create huge employment opportunities, they help us in retaining our artisanal skills, and most important, they give us a reach to the most remote and rustic areas in a country. Cottage industry is a huge boon for our Indian economy. They're indispensable. They contribute to 40% of our GVA, to our Indian economy. 
I would like to highlight the size of this industry and the potentials that our villages have. Indian handicraft industry is a $100 billion industry and is growing at a rate of 20% every year compared to the worldwide rate growth where it is only at 12%. It has actively employed more than 75 lakh of people and is growing continuously. In spite of all these huge numbers that I have shared with you, I would like to bring to your notice that villages still remain to be the weakest point of our society. We often tend to forget that villages are an integral part of our economy. Most of the innovations and new businesses are focused on urban requirements. What would happen if we have new innovations or new businesses focused tapping rural potentials? There's been few organizations who have created an impact to our economy through these rural entrepreneurships. I would like to take you through some breakthrough examples. Gandhiji Swadeshi movement is a revolution of khadi. It's not merely a piece of cloth, it's a philosophy in itself and a symbol of empowerment. An offspring of Khadi, uh, our Swadesh movement is Khadi India, which has recorded a sales of 500 billion rupees last year. Under this uh, commission, it has actively employed more than 5,600 institutions, 30,000 odd cooperative societies, and more than 12 lakh people are actively employed. Amul, a dairy cooperative of uh, India from Gujarat Anand is co-owned by 3.5 million milk producers. It spurred the white revolution of our country which made India the largest producer of milk and milk products. It has recorded a revenue of 380 billion rupees. Today Amul's example is followed in every region of our country and every region have their own cooperative society doing remarkably well. Mr. Madhu Chandran an IT professional from California, quit his fancy store job and started Organic Mandya to help the debt-ridden farmers. As an initial step, he brought together about 240 organic farmers and started a chain of organic shops. In less than four months, they generated a crore revenue, and now they're looking at bringing together 10,000 families. Mr. Mustafa, who wanted to become an entrepreneur by employing people from rural India, started ID Fresh. ID Fresh makes idli and dosa batter. In 2005, when they started manufacturing, they started making 10 packs a day. Today, they manufacture close to 50,000 kgs of batter, and the revenue that they've recorded is 1 billion rupees. Now, coming to my own story, Atike. All of us have this want to become an entrepreneur bug in us very, very strongly. And the bug bites you really hard, when one starts climbing up the corporate ladder in a well-settled job. But trust me, if you take a plunge into it, it'll drive you straight down to the timeline where you started hunting for your first job. The bug in me was socially deeper, and it wanted me to do something more radical. I wanted to start a business in an area that was unexplored and also create an impact to our economy. I wanted to come up with various business models that can be scaled from grassroots to large scale, and where everyone involved in it grows collectively. As a designer at heart, the area that drove my passion was handicraft and toys. The talent available under handicrafts and toys is abundant, and these days there are many artisans who are acquiring these skills, and I'm a strong believer in creating an opportunity that can empower women because if you empower a woman, it benefits her family, in turn benefits the entire community. Empowering women isn't for women, it's for the world. RTK started with a passion to design and manufacture sustainable natural products made from India. And our vision is to create a platform that can bring all the artisans together and enable them to grow their businesses from micro to large scale. Artige is an outcome of all the thought process I've shared with you till now of wanting to contribute to my nation within my own little ability. All of us have these big dreams and big aspirations and start new ventures of wanting to make it really big, but reality bites. Challenges bring you back to reality. 
Our challenge is propped up in various levels, in various geographies, and in an area that we had no clue where we were going. Power cut and infrastructural issue is one of the biggest challenge we still face. I drive about 200 kilometers to an artisanal village to check the progression of our production. After reaching there, I realize there's no power till evening, and I end up buying mangoes. Outages like these disrupt scheduled production, and it's extremely difficult to implement any new technologies as in new technologies invariably need power. It is very surprising that there are many areas today in our rural India that is inaccessible to modern courier services. Treated, fumigated quality wood from sustainable sources is a huge challenge. Artisans these days are seeking alternate job opportunities in small towns or cities, like becoming a master chef. People like to spend more on eating out rather than buying handicrafts these days. We tend to lose the quality artisans to these alternate kind of jobs due to lack of sustained businesses. Over a period of time, the artisans have become extremely casual and laid back. They have no commitment to complete a job taken in spite of giving advances. Their inclination to implement concepts like standardization of production or performance management is very, very limited. They, at one point of time, we were unable to take any large orders because we were unable to meet the corporate and the export obligations. The minute we design a product, launch it in the market, one could find its replica developed at a lower grade and lower materials in the local market. Can copyright the control over the copyrights and control over designs is, was an extremely difficult task. Multinationals use their marketing strength through televisions, cartoons, advertisements, TV channels to promote their branded toys. One can find the replica in market, many replicas of them in the market, which is plastic, toxic, cheap. It's extremely difficult for us the in-house people to compete against such strategies and also introduce a product which has a large impact to get large-scale business. And traditional products are extremely price sensitive. People, because of two reasons, the proximity and familiarity. People still expect to pay what the grandparents paid ages ago, and Indians love to bargain. At one point in time, I was totally lost. I did not know which aspect to focus on. But one has to swim to survive if you've decided to jump in the water. So I simply embraced the glorious mess I was in. I had to call it quits or turn around the odds. My corporate approach, built over years, has taught me to approach the challenges by looking at them in various angles and breaking them into smaller aspects. As a first step, we, through the marketing, uh, understanding the marketing needs through our marketing research, we came up with new toy designs based on the artisanal skills and the raw materials available. We then set up a sales and marketing platform by partnering with various online aggregators, modern retailers, then corporates, and any export job opportunities that may come up. All our products are sold with a guidance on usage and the educational value it has. So this facilitated a customer to justify the prices that they were paying. We then monitored all our production processes very closely. And during this process, we educated our artisans with the quality standards that needs to be followed to reach out for international orders. We uh, then gave all our home run units advances for them to stock up the raw materials based on our quality specifications. We also specified the dimensions of the product and the materials to be used, like wood, paint, etc. We partnered with the modern courier services and optimized our supply chain requirement. We introduced the concept of testing of the product in credited labs, which facilitated international orders. We uh, then convinced our artisans to be very flexible with their work timing and work during the night, as outages normally happen during the day. Now, whenever we have large orders, our artisans prefer to work in the night as production happens faster and they can focus better. The regions that we focused initially was 
Chennapatna due to the proximity, Itikoppa, and Sarangpur. To all my young friends here, I would like to point out that hard work always pays. Results come only over a period of time, not overnight. With all the hard work that we've put together till now, we are very happy to share with you all that this venture has helped more than 50 artisans with sustained businesses. And now we have international quality production. I'm very proud to claim that we have sold thousands of products and the defect rate of these products are less than 1%. We are shortlisted by a few large international brands for online bidding, which is a huge thing for us. And we hope to grow globally very soon. This venture in its own little way has helped in retaining artisanal skills, our workers and artisans today have a huge pride in the products created by them because they can see this in every portal that they log in or somebody would come back and tell them, I saw this product online or in this shop. So they have the pride and dignity for the product that they've created. And most importantly, which all of us, whoever is working, love to have is an opportunity to work from home. Our artisans today work from home, earn their living, while meeting their personal needs and aspirations. I would like to repeat and reiterate that India has no valid option but to protect the interests of our villages. We all know that 70% of our population reside in rural India. We may think that there may be urban migration over a period of time, but the reports say that the migration is for a very small percentile that would be maximum of 5%. The 70% penetration may maximum reduce to 65%. If we have to protect our future sustainability, there is no option other than making our villages economically and culturally viable. While the new India is focused on the IT startups, the call centers, Bollywood stars, consumer and customer glitz, Working towards better managed urban requirement, I would urge you all to reduce this obsession. Let's work towards encouraging rural entrepreneurship and making our country's economy, in turn, making our country's economy grow stronger. Let's work towards better managed rural ecosystem. Let our villages be as aspirational as the rest of India, making India aspirational for the rest of the world. Thank you very much for your patience and hearing me out. Any questions? Thank you. <laughs>